form, so you have to rely on what happens on that next candle. For example, you had a doji that formed here, the market moved on up, uh, was not a top, it moved here, but if you had your uh, position, if you were just a techno strict technical analyst and use that, you could say, well, I'm going to put my stop below this low of this doji candle and get short there. Uh, a lot of ways that you can trade this type of a, a uh, signal, a, a type of a candle that provides clues on a chart. Now, as the market did go down, as they say, we had a uh, situation where the market uh, went on down. We ended up with a kind of a uh, first a bottom here and then a bottom over here, a double bottom, and that perform, provides some support. And then we talk about the pressure kind of builds up from other, underneath. Uh, no matter how you would look at that period of time, that August-September period, quite a challenge for the trend trader, no matter what system you had, no matter uh, you know what you were doing. But in general, we can say that we had a low. We're going to just kind of draw a line out here to make it kind of even right at around the 1080 area and say that this kind of is a, a bottom of the boundary that we were working on. And then we had a situation where we uh, you could put a top somewhere in the vicinity of 1220 and call that uh, pretty much a boundary. Eventually, it breaks out of there, as markets always do. They're going to break out uh, at some point. The degree and so forth will depend upon you know what happens to your profits or losses. Uh, in looking at this, we talked about then also looking at individual candles that can provide some information. We have this candle here, October 27th. That was the day that everybody, uh, well, I don't say everybody, but a lot of people seem to get very over-optimistic about the euro problem, that it was going to be resolved, and they reached this agreement at 4 a.m., and everybody jumped on the bandwagon and said it was going up. Well, uh, you know, so much for that. It was kind of skeptical all around, and you can see the result following that candle. But that kind of performed a, a benchmark high that you can use for targeting some other uh, strategies where you can use that. Now, if we take this uh, particular formation that we're in right now and we put it on the chart, we're going to uh, uh, draw a couple of things in here. Let's take off this uh, this arrows here, and we're going to draw on here a couple of things. We're going to draw, for example, right here. You can see this line coming down here. You can see this line coming up here. And what do you have? You have a triangle. Triangles are important because Frequently, a breakout of a triangle is a clue as to the price direction for the future. So we're operating uh, at this point with a potential triangle. Which way will it break out of there? Well, we don't know. We can't predict that. We can react when it does happen, but we cannot predict what is going to happen. We don't know, uh, you know, the events. We don't know what the traders how they will react to it. Now, if you did see this, if you had different ways of trading it. Uh, a lot of potential strategies. Of course, you can trade straight futures. Uh, you could, in this case, maybe even have, uh, let's say that you were using the SPY, you know, that uh, ETF for your, uh, your S&P 500 index trade. And you could potentially say, if you think that this is going to break out of there and you want to make sure that you kind of have it bracketed and you think that, uh, well, let's say that we have this range that we saw a while ago and that was uh, in the SPY, it would be at one uh, 20 and a high at 128. That would be the boundaries up lower and upper boundaries. You could have bought a strangle, assuming that you assume that it's going to really break out one way or the other. You just don't know which way. You could have bought one of those earlier today when I looked. Where you would buy a 120 uh, December put and a 128 December call for around $530. Uh, of course, then the market has to move some points, and it has to, you know, have a, a big enough move to make it worthwhile. If you don't think it's going to move, if you say it's, think it's going to stay in the range, you know, based upon your uh, sense of the market and so forth, you could sell the strangle, you know, assuming that it was going to stay in that range. Collect the premium and put it in your account and move on to the to the next situation. Now we're going to cut back our time frame again. We got a bigger picture look, but we want to zero in and take a look at a little shorter time frame. So we're going to cut back our uh, time here to just a three-month chart of the E-mini. And we're going to start putting in some indicators. You know, We know what we have if we're looking at it from a typical 
a traditional technical analysis standpoint, we have a triangle. We know from a candle standpoint, we had a you know candle that kind of got uh, out of whack. You can see that when we look at these candles as they move up and down, it's kind of one of those uh, situations that seems to be three candles down, three candles up. You know, kind of an alternating uh, scenario. No guarantees, but you could potentially uh, use that three candle move and say that you're going to place a stop. Uh, above the low of those candles or above the, the candles, whatever, and try to catch it on that basis. But you still don't have a very uh, precise uh, idea, precise rule as to where to place your trades. So we're going to add some indicators and see if we can't get some help. And these come from the Vantage Point software. And the first one we're going to add is just simply the medium term exponential moving average. Now the medium term exponential moving average, and, and this is a moving average study that is useful, pretty common uh, type of a study if you're looking at uh, you know, any kind of a, a strategy type of thing when you're placing that you know that the angle of this moving average, that blue line that you see there, that's kind of a important to determine the trend or give you an indication of the trend. You know that that's going to change when you have these crossover type situations where this shorter term exponential moving average, it's a four day, four day exponential moving average, by the way, of typical prices, which is the average of the high, low, and close. And that compares with this black line that you see here. That's a 10-day simple moving average of the close. And in this case, the computer, the neural network studies that have been done uh, by the Vantage Point software has determined that this is the best combination for detecting medium-term trends. So we're not talking medium-term like being very far out in the future, but for a few days ahead, you know, not just for the next day or two, but for several days ahead. And then if you look at this, we can see, well, there are some places here. You can see where this uh, blue line started to turn well before the black line. Kind of give you an early alert. Something could be going on. Something could be happening. Uh, same way at the top, the blue line starts to turn down, and this happens before, well before the black line, the 10-day simple moving average starts to move down. So you have that uh, as an early alert, not a, a thing to trade because you have to put your other indicators together, but you have an early alert that something might be afoot. Now we're going to take another look at this particular type of uh, moving average as a clue, and that is the predicted difference. The predicted difference that you see on the bottom of the screen is the uh, predicted difference, the difference between a predicted, a uh, predicted moving average and an actual moving average. That blue line that you see there really is the blue line that you see up above. And if you'll notice at certain key points, like where you can see where the vertical line goes there, that when that uh, blue line, the exponential moving average, moves up to the black line, you can see in the bottom side of the bottom uh, panel there that you have the uh, line right at the zero line, the black line. The predicted difference pretty much essentially serves, and again, we want to get back, we can get back to our weather analogy. It's a pretty much a barometer. You know, what's the the situation here? A different view of how the uh, market is moving up and down. Is the readings high or are they low? Kind of what you can expect. So we are reading the barometric pressure here. Where's the momentum? What is pushing the price? Is it pushing it up? Is the trend strengthening? Is the trend weakening? 